is Bruce Friedman of Adult Site Broker, and welcome to Adult Site Broker Talk, where every week we interview one of the movers and shakers of the adult industry and discuss what's going on in our business. Plus, we give you a tip on buying and selling websites. This week, we'll be talking to Dan Leal, a.k.a. Porno Dan, of Immoral Productions. Before we get started, Adult Site Broker is proud to announce Adult Site Broker Cash, the first affiliate program for an adult website brokerage. With Adult Site Broker Cash, you'll have the chance to earn as much as 20% of our broker commission referring sellers and buyers to us at Adult Site Broker. Check our website at adultsitebroker.com for more details. First of all today, let's cover some of the news going on in our industry. Vixen Media Group released a statement via Twitter addressing the Black Lives Matter protest and announcing a company-wide review of brand guidelines and creative processes, in addition to making a donation to several organizations on the front lines diligently organizing and protecting our citizens' rights to peaceful protest. Vixen's brands include Blacked, Blacked Raw, Deeper, Tushy, Tushy Raw, and Vixen. The Free Speech Coalition has announced a delay in the release of a set of preliminary health and safety guidelines for the industry when filming resumes. The production hold put into place in March in response to the coronavirus pandemic remains in effect. Now let's feature our property of the week that's for sale at Adult Site Broker. We're selling a network of 312 white label cam sites. They promote webcam whiz, live jasmine, chatterbait, streamate, Flirt for Free, Cams.com, Bonga Cams, and X Love Cams. Besides this being a highly profitable business with a lot of quality traffic, there are some older sites that don't have a lot of traffic but have some amazing cam domains. All traffic is either direct or organic. If you're already in the live cam business or want to get into it, this is a great opportunity for you. You get the entire network for only $760,000. Now time for this week's interview. Today on Adult Site Broker Talk, I'm speaking to Dan Leal, also known as Porno Dan. Dan's company is, of course, Immoral Productions. Dan, thanks for being with us today. Oh, my pleasure, Bruce. Thank you. Now, this is from Dan's Wikipedia page. Yes, he has a Wikipedia page. And if I read the whole thing, I'd be talking for a half hour straight. So I decided to take the highlights here. Now, in, uh, in 2018, Dan was nominated by XBiz as the mainstream star of the year, the sixth time he's been nominated for this award. In addition, he's been nominated three times by AVN as the mainstream star of the year. Dan gained a great deal of mainstream exposure on a reality series, I didn't know about this, that ran for two seasons on, on HBO Canada called The Right Hand. Uh, Dan's journey through adult was documented in the 2012 feature-length film Danland, which was on Netflix. Dan's career really took off in May 2009 when he starred, or when he started rather, his top-selling Fuck a Fan show, which is what a lot of people know Dan from. This led to what would become a partnership with Streamate. Fuck a Fan was the number one show on Streamate for many years, and Dan has been nominated several times as the most popular male on Cam. And in 2015, Dan got the ultimate award, becoming a member of the AVN Hall of Fame. And even more importantly than all that, he's the star of my Facebook feed because I just I just can't look at Facebook without checking to see who Dan boned today. So, uh, so Dan, thanks for being with us. My um, pleasure. What do you most like? Now, you, you moved, I don't know, how many years ago did you move to Europe? Almost four years ago. Okay. And you live in Budapest, right? Yeah, I live in Budapest, correct. What do you like most about living there? Um, it's, I like the change of pace, you know. It's not, it's a first, being in our industry, it's a lot less drama-free than it is in America. You know, America, it's more about politics and drama for the, being an important <laughs> industry. And here, people just do their job and kind of just leave you alone. Mm-hmm. So, for me, it's a lot less stressful living here. Okay. Um, uh, the the industry in Europe has gotten a lot more robust, has it not? Well, I mean, I think it's, the reason why is, you know, the, with all the regulations in the United States and it's mm-hmm. 
become increasingly harder and harder to attract, you know, women models to do professional porn. Uh, uh-huh. That it's easier to get models in Europe to do professional porn. Not to mention, there's a big cost savings uh, by shooting here. It's not so much what the rate the models get paid; it's the mm-hmm. crews and the locations and the makeup mm-hmm. artists, all the secondary costs, the editing. Everything's so much cheaper in Europe from that standpoint. So that's why a lot of the American productions have moved production over here. It's just, it's, mm-hmm. and again, it's, it's easier to do business here than it is in America now. Sure, I think I think with everything now. Um, what 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 would the cost savings be? In Europe versus a uh, a production in the U.S. I mean, a cameraman, a cameraman, but an editor is going to make. I'll just shoot a number out. Say an editor in America is going to charge you a thousand for a project. An editor mm-hmm. in Budapest is going to charge you two to three hundred. You know, a cameraman, it's going to be a thousand. It's going to be two to three hundred. Mm-hmm. So it's it's the secondary cost. Like I said, it's not the talent. It's the big mm-hmm. savings are in a cruise, the locations, the location is going to be the same thing. That's where mm-hmm. you save the money. The talent, mm-hmm. yes, it is cheaper, but it's not much cheaper anymore. So it's really, really? like I said, it's, yeah, is the, it, talent, the rates ta- almost, talent rates are almost the same now. Are they really? Wow, it used to be a lot cheaper, didn't it? It did at one point, yes, but mm-hmm. not anymore. I think it's because you came there. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it is is just there's a glut of performers in America, and there's not that mm-hmm. much work. And right. that's driven the price down of the American performers. Ah. And, in, in, you know, and in Europe, there's not a glut of performers. There's a, there's a large rotation of models mm-hmm. that come in uh, from the former Eastern Bloc, and they don't come for a long time. Right. So it's, it's, it's most of the models, for example, where I live in Budapest or where I used to shoot in Prague, most of the models don't live there. They travel. So they're there mm-hmm. for a very, you know, sh- they're there for a very finite period of time, mm-hmm. and as a result, they're there to work. They're not there just right. to you know to, to make friends and socialize. Whereas a lot of the model, most of the models, you know, in America, they live in America, right? They you know right. they they might they might not live in Los Angeles, but they still live in America. It's not like they're mm-hmm. going to have to train. You know, they don't have to go go through customs and travel mm-hmm. as much. So it's like, you know, they, if they're in L.A. or they're where you shooting, shooting, they're there for a while. Here, they're here strictly to work. They're not here to, you know, they're not here to, do, you know, socialize, and it makes the work much more serious for them. But also mm-hmm. because they're here for a shorter time, their rates have gone up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the rates. I mean, when you count factor in the difference between a dollar and a euro, they're almost mm-hmm. exactly the same. So basically, the the costs in the U.S. have come down. While well, the cost in the in, in the cost uh, European of the Union have average, come up a little bit. Correct. The cost of the average girl has definitely gone down. Now the cost mm. of the top stars has gone way up. So mm. it's kind of like a nine ten rule. Now ten percent mm. of the girls in America are getting ninety percent of the work because mm. it's such a star based system in America, sure. where you know it's the only the girls that are selling in America are the same ten percent. And a lot of the girls think, oh, you know, there's like this great conspiracy. It's not. It's sales. It's really mm-hmm. – it's simple. It's cold. Girls get shot mm-hmm. who sell, and that's it. And mm-hmm. you really don't know until you shoot a model who's going to sell. There's mm-hmm. no favoritism anymore. I mean mm-hmm. pretty much every company is owned by you know a large conglomeration. So right. very, very few independent porn producers like myself left. Most everybody has you know, been gobbled up by one of the big companies. True. That's very true. Do you, um, you know, you mentioned the star system. Um, I would imagine you're in a you're in a position to help some of these models, uh, you know, gain a higher profile. I mean, for for Europe, yes, you know, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. my stuff. I I try to get you know, as much exposure for I can as them, and mm-hmm. my stuff you know, is very visible and seen all over, you know, the globe. Uh, but again, it's not, you know, sometimes it's not, it's hard. Even I can't predict after 20 years who's going to make it as a star and who's not hmm. because it's the, who the fans identify with. Right. And there's been quite a few girls who I thought, you know, need to shoot them once and that was it. And they've gone on to become very well, well-known girls and other girls who are like, oh, my God, this girl's going to be great. And then you never see her again. Hmm. You don't okay. really know. You know, it's it's okay. strange what you know. I think I said there's no formula. If a girl walks in the door, this girl's going to be a superstar. You don't mm-hmm. know. You don't know. 
because I said, because it is the 90 10 rule, which, which of these 10 girls is going to be the one who makes it, you know, you don't know. And that's all it is. Really. It's one out of 10 and that's a real world that really makes it now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So tell me about the projects you're working on now. I mean, right now I've just been working on, you know, uh, Doing stuff with my uh, uh, repackaging a lot of my content. So I mean, I've got uh, my sites with Gamma. We've kind of re- we've changed everything uh, mm-hmm. around. So in America, it was all more just strictly about the live show, mm-hmm. but now we've changed it so it's more story driven. Um, so we're utilizing the you know the backdrop and the, you know shooting the, the advantage that I do shoot in Europe <clears throat> for the new sites, mm-hmm. the new project, and it's and it's all like. You know, family taboo stuff, but with a different twist, with a European twist on it, which nobody was doing. Mm. Um, so it's like all you know, family related, you know, step stuff, but with European mm. angle. Um, so it's you know, it's fun to shoot, and and we, I play into the strength, you know, you play into your strengths. So the fact that the girls don't speak English very well, we use as a strength, you know, mm. where they're exchange students, you know, instead of using it as a weakness, use the fact that English isn't their first language to make it fit into the stories better. Uh, with step families and you know mm-hmm. all pairs things like that and we and we, <clears throat> and we write all these storylines for it but then the sex itself is still streamed live on you know on my website mm-hmm. so we shoot the we shoot the first part separately and then we shoot, you know which is not streamed live and then the second part is streamed live oh, so cool. it's kind of like it's, it's a true hybrid where a cam show but with story driven content as well which is very popular Mm-hmm. Now, besides the money aspect that we talked about before, what are the biggest differences between shooting in the U.S. versus shooting in Europe? I mean, again, like I said, it's one. You know, the girls are, are here for a short time, so mm-hmm. you don't know, like you don't know the girls like I knew them in America. Mm-hmm. So, even where I live in Budapest, which is one of the main two production hubs, there may be twenty porn girls that live here total mm-hmm. that I know. Sounds like, they're coming to, sounds like they're coming to get you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the background. So there are very few models who live here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are very few Hungarian girls that get in porn. Now, like, they're all coming, you know, they come in from other places. Mm-hmm. So because of that, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not a social scene. It's, it's professional. Mm-hmm. It's work. Right. You know, which is good. So it's like, you know, for someone like me, you know, I scale back my production. I don't shoot as often as I used to. Hmm. But I, you know, I have, you know, I've got more of a normal life where I can go to football <laughs> games all the time and you know, go, nice. go to the gym every day. So I'm a lot healthier than I was in America, where you're not caught up in the rat roll of, you know, yeah. the whole porn scene that you kind of get stuck in in Los Angeles. Yeah, I can, I can only imagine. Um, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, with porn production in the next year and beyond with everything that's going on in the world? I think what's going to, I mean, realistically, the amount of professional porn production is going to continue to decrease um, Mm -hmm. as more and more companies are unable to make a profit on their own. Mm -hmm. I think every size company is going to be forced to sell or go out of business to one of Hmm. the big conglomerates, whether it be, you know, a web group who owns X videos, you know, um, whether it be Gamma, whether it be MindGeek, uh, you know, or one of the other uh, conglomerations, that that's kind of what's happening because it's become so hard to make sales to a subscription-based site that mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense anymore. When the consumer has what I would call the Netflix and porn model available mm-hmm. through either Pornhub Premium, you know, uh, X Videos Red, or mm-hmm. X Hamster Gold, you know. All, all of those have thousands and thousands of quality H, you know, 4K videos right. for a consumer to watch. And because more and more people like, you know, this all, you know, 9.99, you can watch everything mm-hmm. from X Hamster or X Videos or Pornhub, mm-hmm. that you can watch tons of great scenes. So the individual guys who have their individual subscription sites, it's not really, it's becoming, it's becoming harder and harder for them. Not to mention, with the rise of ability for models to shoot their own content if you're a top quality model you know mm-hmm. a model does need to work for the studios other than to help brand get their name and exposure out in the beginning and then you know once a year i think it's good for them too but you know mm-hmm. things like camming 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 is much much bigger than porn production much bigger yes and yes. you know 
and people ne- don't think the cam girls are porn stars. Well, yes, they are. They're the same thing. They're mm-hmm. porn stars. Okay. Sure. You know, there's, there's no difference to me. You're a cam star. You're a porn star. Same thing. Okay. Same thing. You know, and mm-hmm. camming is infinitely bigger than porn production. You know, and then you have the, all the clip based models, whether it be yes. only fans or many vids or clips mm-hmm. for sale. You know, yep. those girls are all integrating and shooting their own content. And again, it sure. makes sense for them I, to shoot for the professional companies every now and then. But again, most of them they don't they can go directly to the consumer now, and right. since they can go straight to the consumer, they don't need to work for the big company or porn companies as much, and it gives them you know the opportunity to to build a career, mm-hmm. whereas you know that what that ha- that wasn't always the case. You know, one thing I've noticed about you, and it really stands out, and I think it has a lot to do with your success over the years. You're one of the very few male um, performers that I see at the events <laughs> back when we had events. Um, yeah. And I just kind of, um, you know, obviously with my marketing background, I think it, that's something that's, that, that has a lot to do with your success. Um, but maybe you can kind of uh, give me your philosophy behind being present and accountable for the industry the way you are. I mean, my background is, you know, I was in sales and marketing as well. You know, I spent 10 mm-hmm. years in corporate America in sales mm-hmm. before I did porn. And when I got into this, I looked at it as just a business um, yes. and, you know, and how to build my name and recognition. It wasn't just by building my brand and recognition to the consumers, but to the company owners as well. Mm-hmm. And that's why I've always gone to the industry events and, you know, all the, not the AVNs of the world, you know, the, the real industry events, you know, the webmaster shows and the, you know, the, yep. the, the business, business conventions. And you're right. The, there's, as far as performers, I mean, over the years, there have been maybe 10 performers that I've seen at these events on a regular yes. basis. And they're, mm-hmm. and they're all, we've all got gray hair now. <laughs> I don't think well, you, you Well, you, you don't, uh, but I, I thought the black yeah, hair was natural, Dan. <laughs> yeah, I, Died. I couldn't have imagined that. So I died. It's horrible. That's yeah, but okay. I mean, it's like you know, my you know, and, and again, like you know, the, how many everybody you know I see at these shows, you know, it's like a, there's like an old school class. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, again, uh, the newer generation of people, so you, I do see some of them getting in, you realize it because they do sell straight to the consumer, where that mm-hmm. option, straight to the consumer option, wasn't available when I started. There was no camming, you know, and if it was, it was, you know, just in the infant stages, you know, the, the clips for sale model was just clip, you know, it was, it was clip, you know, it was just, it was very limited and it was very mm-hmm. niche and fetishy. It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't mainstream except that there was no, you know, there was no OnlyFans, there was no many mm-hmm. bids, there was no, so it's a result now that they have all these platforms. Mm-hmm. A lot of these, you know, the new generation of performers, they can, since they can sell straight to the consumer, you know, I think it's important for them for people to try to make it to realize that things are always changing in this business. And just because that's the situation now, they should probably also work with the studios because it helps build their brand and their recognition because you don't know what's going to happen. Because five mm-hmm. years ago, nobody would have thought that, you know, what what is this, you know, this, this clip model is taking off like crazy and mm-hmm. the subscription based sites have gotten hammered. But we don't know what's going to happen in five years. No one does <clears throat> because <That's true. clears throat> could if you could know. Be filthy rich. <clears throat> <laughs> Amen to that. Now, do you think the the adult industry has become more or, or less accepted by the mainstream media and public, and why? In certain ways, it's become way more accepted. For example, if you say Pornhub to any person, you know, any millennial, they know what Pornhub is, right? And everybody mm-hmm. bitch to watch Pornhub. When I started doing this 20 years ago, you know, it was still seedy, dirty, you know, we're, we're buying – VHS um, at 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 the, at the porno shop, right? You know? <clears throat> and that's completely changed. You know, now, like I said, you can walk around on a Pornhub shirt. And everybody knows what porn. Everyone in the world knows what Pornhub is. Right? All world. Sure. So in that aspect, it is more accepted. But on the mm-hmm. other aspect, okay, when you have large networks like HBO or, that I used to be on, no longer mm-hmm. accepts adult programming, and you have this sure. kind of rise of. Of <clears throat> what to me at least appears, you know, the various conservatives rise of, you know, uh, backlash, you know, porn is evil, mm-hmm. that it's not accepted. So even though, sure. it, it, yes, it's accepted in one way, 
it's like, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, but in another way, it's not. And even though it's so much more visible and watched by so many, the number of people who see my films now versus see them, you know, when I started has probably increased a thousandfold, you know, because for sure, because, you know, even say a top selling DVD I had sold, we'll just say 3000 copies. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was good. You know, I can put up a video on X videos and get 5 million people to watch it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, so we're talking a thousand factors, you know, of, of hmm. more of, of videos or of views. That it's kind of mind boggling when you kind of mind boggling when you think about it. Right. So it's like so when you think about it, sure, people used to recognize me, you know, for like, oh, OK, you know, you're porn or dance, you know, I'm outlandish and blah, blah, blah. And I was, this is in the VHS days or DVD, right. DVD days. Sure. But now it's like I go, you know, some people, some people always look and I'm like, and I know why they, they, they recognize me from Pornhub or X videos or X hamster because <laughs> they got millions. I mean, got millions and millions of views, millions right. and millions and millions right. and millions. Of <clears throat> That's awesome. How, how do you like being recognized that way? I mean, I've been used to it for quite a long time because, you know, the mainstream television that I've done. So mm-hmm. since I've done a lot of mainstream TV, most of the time when people come up to me that, They'll do it, and oh, I've seen. They'll, they'll mention like whatever project I've just done, you know, like if I was mm-hmm. on TV and stuff, because I do, you know, or if I was on, you know, like I did, you know, done, what, you know, working with HBO or working with Netflix, mm-hmm. they'll approach me in that way. So that way, to them, it's not like they, they, it's, it's not, it's not like you know, it's not a CD. They always know you from Pornhub. They're like, oh, I know you right. from Netflix. I'm like, yeah, nice, you know, nice to meet you. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm, but if I go to a nightclub, for example, where there's young people around, mm-hmm. you know. It's a hundred a hundred percent chance people are going to come up to me. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, and they're always, you know, it's it's and it's always guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, young guys. Yeah, oh yeah, young guys. Oh always, yeah. yeah, young guys always come up to me. They want to you know, be. Just, they want to be you. <laughs> so you know, young guys will come up to me, and I always, you know, I'll take pictures through Instagram and hang out. And sure. Beer or whatever. Yeah, that's good. Me. That's good. Um. When do you think we'll be back to porn production after this whole coronavirus thing? I would think they start back in Europe. I mean, I know some places in Europe never shut down. Um, mm-hmm. I know same. As, I know some performers in America never stopped. I'm not stupid, uh, but mm-hmm. I think probably realistically within two weeks I, in Europe uh, that because Europe is quote ahead of the curve of America. Mm-hmm. Um, they usually that, are. <laughs> and also, you know, that I think that they'll start back. But, the, you know, one thing he, that I've noticed living here is when the government here says stay at home, for example, in Hungary, mm. people stay at home. Yeah. That's it. They don't argue. They don't protest. They don't, you know, we never ran out of toilet paper. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's they listen, okay? And right. as a result, you know, the at least in Hungary, the COVID rate is one tenth of that of a lot of other places. Per mm-hmm. say, you know, one, it's I think thirty. The rate here is thirty for one hundred thousand, mm-hmm. where the rate, for example, in, in the United States is about two thousand. Um, mm-hmm. So the reason the rate's so much lower again is the people you know they don't they, they you know you know they, they're sorry two hundred not two thousand, mm-hmm. um, but uh per one hundred thousand. But the reason is they is you know when the government says stay at home, mm-hmm. they stay at home. They understand you know, the government says social distancing, social distance. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah, that's it. And as a result, it didn't spread as quickly. Now there'll we'll probably be a second wave. There'll probably be a second mm-hmm. wave because we start to interact more. It right. sounds like the spread again. And mm-hmm. when there's a second wave, I'm sure you know we'll, we'll shut down again. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, I like I said, I anticipate within two weeks. Production starting back, and if it's you know if we get a second wave, you know that's what happens. You know we get a second wave, and we'll shut down again. But yeah, it's been, there's ahead. enough rich people that are, it's their vested interest that you know someone's going to find a you know a cure for this, and someone's going to find a vaccine. Seems to be, seems to be. Um, here in Thailand, it's been the same way. By the way, uh, when they told people to stay at home, they stayed at home. So yeah, <laughs> stay at home. And they fi- if they're finally opening up uh, Pattaya. So, you know, they're down to, oh, God, they haven't had a case in Pattaya for almost three weeks now. Oh, wow. Jesus. Yeah. 
not bad, not bad. Um, most of the most of the cases here are in the south. So, so what what advice would you give to someone who's just starting as a producer? I mean, it's a, if you're starting as a producer, you got to look at this. You know, you, you got to have a business plan, and you got to, mm-hmm. you know, if you were a producer, I'd honestly probably tell you to do something else. <laughs> For real, because it, it, I, I really would. I'd say save your money, you okay. know, do something else if you're a producer, because it's so hard as a company to be profitable. Because because mm-hmm. it could, because it can because it's, you have the direct to consumer model now for sure. the models. The models don't need producers like they did. They don't need the agents like they did, and you know, you're it's right. a producer. You know, it's hard. You, you, how do you attract quality models and how do you – even if you pay the quality models, and even if you shoot the best content in the world, which you could do all those things, okay? You say mm-hmm. you go to a great agent and you hire the best and hire great scenes and you put it out there on the tubes, okay? That was the, the secret, right? You put it out there and people see it. Why mm-hmm. is somebody going to join your site for twenty nine ninety nine a month when they can join Pornhub Premium for $10 a month? Yeah. And see everybody's stuff, you know, and that's a, and and even if you put your stuff on porno premium, you're still not going to make enough to make yourself profitable. So sure. for produce, so for producers, I would say, you know, honestly, if you're thinking about it, think of something else. Now, if you're talent, I think it's the great, you know, and that's how I came up. I came up, you know, as talent. I was a producer, but I've always been more talent. There's never mm-hmm. been a better time for talent. For talent, okay. it's the greatest time ever because you can sell straight to the producer, or I mean, straight mm-hmm. to the consumer. And you can also, and if you choose to help build your brand and recognition, you can work for the production companies every now and then. And that's what I see right. quite a few of the models in Europe doing, mm-hmm. is you know, they do their OnlyFans, they do their many vids, they do their coming, and then mm-hmm. they do like one or two tours. Mm-hmm. And I think that's you know for a performer, it's never been better because they have the flexibility to work from home. And then they want to build, help you know. Let's, you know, go to this consumer base and let's shoot some professional scenes for whatever big company that they, they feel like shooting for. They go shoot them. So for performers, the strength, the, you know, it's really, in the, it's really, you know, the power is really in, 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 into the performer's hands now. Okay. Um, what advice would you give to a new male actor? I mean, if you're a new male actor, I mean, it's, I think, it, again, it's easier than when I started, you know, for a male actor because you can build a fan base directly to the consumer and treat the consumers, you know, you treat your fan base with, you know, with compassion and kindness and be attentive because, mm-hmm. you, you know, people talk and, you know, if you have a good rep, you have a good rep. So a fan, if a guy is a male talent now, he can, he can sell straight to the consumer, you know, whether, and I think the best way for a guy would be, at, you know, doing camming. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, the guy has aspirations to be a professional porno star, which I don't know why someone really would these days, uh, <laughs> you know, because, you know, again, the money's not in it like it was. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, that's it's a, it's it's it's, it's, it's find somebody, to, you know, to cam with mm-hmm. and you know, and start camming with them. But if for a guy, a guy, again, a guy can make more money working directly for himself and, mm-hmm. you know, build up a brand and everything else. And bypass the professional system. Okay. Now, the most important question of all, Dan. How much of the early shows you attended do you even remember? <laughs> Quite a few of them, zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, zero. I look at some pictures that people post and I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember that. No. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I'll talk to some of my friends. I don't know if you remember, like, DJ Eric. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And him and I would just start laughing our heads off, Eric Hassel, because he's like, well, Pete, or like JC, you know, we'll like see pictures of, you know, Baumgartner, and we'll be like, oh my God. <laughs> what the fuck? But, you know, but it is, you know, so we've all been doing this for 20 years. So, you know, 20 years ago, we were a young guy, you know, I was just turning 30 years old. So we were young guys and we just got into, you know, porn was a lot different back then. It was, you know what it was like. It was like the Wild West. Yes. And, you know, the shows were, you know, it was, the shows were as hedonistic as people, you know, people can, more hedonistic than people can imagine. You know, they were freaking, they were just giant parties. You know, I'm, not, I'm in the I old came, internet. I came in, I came in, I came in a little stuff. bit too late for that. Uh, but I, I came in and just on the heels of that because I've been at this for like 16 years, so. Yeah. But I, I saw I saw some of it. 
Yeah, the old I, the, the, I think the, the real crazy, the, the shows started to become more civilized uh, after the, the, the IA 2000 shows of the diplomat and in, mm-hmm. in, in Florida yep. were just, those were the real and the, crazy, crazy because, and then the Phoenix forum, yep. the old, old ones would have been the so next great. batch of just complete mayhem. Where those, you know, it was just, you know, you, you would, you'd get off the, because, you know, we, we all flew into these places where you'd get off the plane and you really wouldn't put down, you'd have a drink in your hand until the time you went home. <laughs> yes, I recall. Yes, I recall. I've been to, vir- I went to virtually every Phoenix Forum. I'm so sad that it doesn't exist anymore. I, I have hopes that it will be back. Yeah. But I mean, again, you know, the, 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 it was, the industry was different then, you know, it was mm-hmm. a completely, from production, it was a completely different game. It was subscription yep. based. You know, the tube sites weren't even around, and and, and right. you know, none of this, the tube sites didn't have pay models then. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was just a completely different industry. Right. And that's why right. I tell people like, oh, what do you advise for the future? I'm like, I don't know what's going to happen because I look, you mm-hmm. know, 15 years ago, you know, and this is when you know, everybody we thought every everybody figured it out. You don't need DVDs anymore. You don't need mm-hmm. VHS. We've got to figure it out. Subscription mm-hmm. based. We're all going to be rich forever. <laughs> Boom. Tube sites, okay. All right, yeah. tube sites. We got that figured out. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna make money. We're gonna put the stuff on the tubes. Right. Boom, the tubes start. You know, it's, it's like you mm-hmm. don't know. So it's like now you got all the perf- perf- you know, performers selling straight to the, you know, to the consumers. So you don't know what's gonna happen next. Mm-hmm. No one does. Yeah. And that's and you don't know how things are gonna change. Yeah, I mean, what did, what's your if you could look into a crystal ball? What do you what do you see three to five years from now? I think you're going to see very, very few production companies left. Very mm-hmm. few. If you're not mm-hmm. part of one of the big ones, you're going to be gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they're going to have to sell. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think you're just going to see the continued rise of, you know, of, 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 of the selling straight to consumer model. Camming mm-hmm. will continue to be popular, especially as technology mm-hmm. gets better. You know, the, the better technology gets in the clearer and clearer of broadcasting abilities become which happens all the time you know broadcasting in vr broadcasting in 4k broadcasting augmented reality i think you're going to see you know you'll see all that mm-hmm. where the consumer is able to you know interact with stars and other performers you know in, in group settings and things you know i think having will just continue continue to drive uh it's not going to stop and i think mm-hmm. you know the for the performers since there's going to be less professional studios uh, they're mm-hmm. going to have the performers will sell straight to consumers, and if the you know the consumers want to work for one of the traditional studios, which will be owned by one you know, of the big five six companies left, you know then they'll go work for them. But uh, you'll definitely what exists today will not exist where you see all these production companies, and you see for example, and again I'm speaking of America, you see this mm-hmm. agency based you know large that's you'll, that will all go away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we shall see. Well, Dan, hey, I I would so much like to thank you for being with us today on Adult Side Broker Talk. And I really hope we'll we'll be able to get you back for a future show. All right. Anytime, Bruce. Take care, buddy. Okay. Take care, Dan. Thanks. My broker tip today is part four of what to do to make your site more valuable when you decide to sell it later. Trademark your website. Having a trademark instantly protects your brand and makes your site more valuable when it comes time to sell it. Trademarking your site will cost an average of about $1,500, but should be more than worth the investment when it comes time to sell it. Show buyers ways you feel the site can make more money in the future. This includes showing them future plans you may have, traffic trends, as well as sales trends. If things are growing and you can show them how to grow it more, they're likely to be more willing to pay more for the site. Do something unique with your site. If you have competitors, figure a way to do it better. Be different in some distinguishable way that makes you better. Your members will notice and spend more money with you as well. Make your site a place that people want to visit, not just to buy things or view porn. Be creative, not just one of the many. Keep thinking outside the box and make positive changes on your site. Think like a buyer when planning or updating your site. Don't think like a tech. Think like the consumer. We'll talk more about this subject next week. 
And next week, we'll be talking to Leah Tannett of Pineapple Support. And that's it for this week's Adult Site Broker Talk. I'd once again like to thank my guest, Porno Dan Leo. Talk to you again next week on Adult Site Broker Talk. I'm Bruce Friedman.